You don't really know much about Halloween. Welcome back to another unboxing video. I am your host, Joel. I am one half of the Newly Deads. And if you are not familiar with us, go to thenewlydeads.com. Check out all of our other content. Um, we are artists. You can go find out events where we're going to be or selling our wares and come out and say hello. We also write two separate blogs. We have a TV show. There's lots of other YouTube videos that you can find on the channel you're currently on, as well as uh, a podcast that we do that is a audio version of our television show, Dallas for Driving, where we talk about movies that we pick up out in the wild, typically at places like Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, uh, you know, other places like that. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, there is a link on the website to get out in touch with us, or you can uh, contact us at contact at thenewlydeads.com, and we'd be happy to say hello. So this is the first of two videos where we're getting into kind of the, the basic stuff. They had the Halfway to Black Friday subscriber sale. And in that sale, things went a little sideways. And so <laughs> there are uh, a lot of things that they had, because every day they had a different themed sale. And so, you know, they kind of add up in the course of time. And this is kind of the bulk of that stuff. So. First thing we have here is All American Murder from 1991, which was directed by Anson Williams, who uh, some of you, if you're of a certain age, like this guy here, may know him as Potsy from Happy Days. Um, he did a whole lot of TV back in the day. Uh, this stars one Christopher Walken, who uh, has done True Romance, which is one of my favorites, as well as so many more things. The guy is just an endless font of creativity. Uh, this movie is about an antisocial college student who gets transferred to a new college where he meets a popular girl in school. Um, when she's suddenly killed, he becomes the prime suspect. And when he tries to clear his name, more victims fall to the brutal killer. So <clears throat> Ken Russell was originally set to direct this film, which if you are familiar with Ken Russell, if you're a film lover at all, you probably know that name. But uh, I thought it sounded interesting and um, you know, can't go wrong with Christopher Walken in my opinion. Could be wrong but uh, next we have the seller which this looks right up my alley uh from 1988 this is directed by kevin tenney who did witchboard uh night of the demons and pinocchio's revenge which i remember when i was working at the video store um, in forest park that was a movie that came out and i remember renting it and going what the hell is this uh this stars patrick kilpatrick Sounds like a... you get what i'm saying um, who, you know this guy, he's done a ton of stuff, uh, including Minority Report, Eraser, Last Man Standing. If you saw his face, look him up, you'll know, you'll, you'll be like, I know that guy. He's one of those faces. Um, there's the alternate cover art and the, the disc there. Uh, so for this one, uh, a family moves into an old house in the Texas desert that is haunted by a Native American curse in the form of a ferocious creature that dwells underground. Um... Now, Kevin Tenney took over as director of this film after the previous director, John Woodward, left early in the production, which is a little bit concerning, maybe why it was relegated to kind of the, the shelves, as it were. But it's getting new life on Vinegar Syndrome, and I'm excited to check it out. Minefield from 1988. You might recognize this dude right here. Uh, this was directed by Jean-Claude Lord, who did Eddie and the Cruisers 2, Eddie Lives, the better of the two. Or even the first one. And uh, The Vindicator. I, I do know what Eddie and the Cruises is. I just never, I never actually saw it. Uh, as I said, you got this guy here, Mr. Michael Ironside, who was in the fantastic Starship Troopers, the amazing Scanners, the awesome Total Recall, and the reasonable to Top Gun. Um, this is about a police detective who uh, kills a criminal, and the traumatic event triggers a locked memory uh, he didn't know he had of him being a subject in a CIA experiment. Uh, 
sounds like something that happens to people pretty often. Um, so during the filming, uh, Michael Ironside was less than satisfied with working alongside the director, as well as the actress Lisa Langlis, even to the point that he wanted both of them to be fired from the production. Sounds kind of like a dick move in my opinion, but, uh, you know, hey, if you're a big enough star, you can call the shots, I suppose. Um, and I like Michael Ironside. I'm not you know, knocking him in any way. But uh, <clears throat> it just, it's, uh, it's one I, I keep hearing about, reading about, and it keeps popping up on the radar. And it was super inexpensive. Um, so, you know, some extra features. You get the film itself. You get a nice little booklet here. You get pictures of Michael Ironside with a gun. And uh, these two guys, one of which was the director. <clears throat> so I'm curious. It almost, it looks kind of scanner-ish. Scanner-esque, which uh, I, I have the entire Scanner franchise. I'm a fan, but uh, we will find out soon enough. Uh, we have Red Surf from 1989. This is one of those that uh, I feel like people should know about, but they don't for some reason. I didn't know about it. Uh, this was directed by H. Gordon Booz, who did Touch Me and Perfect Assassins, uh, to name a couple. Uh, this has a star here that I don't know. There he is right there. <clears throat> that you may recognize, one uh, George Clooney, who may have done a film or two in his life, uh, including from Dust Till Dawn. Uh, he was on ER. Uh, Return of the Killer Tomatoes is the one that people seem to forget. And uh, Grizzly 2, The Revenge, the recent uh, sequel to the original Grizzly, which was uh, begun but never finished and just now was finally finished and released to much applause. I have heard as much. Uh, um, so in this film, a surfer enjoys life with drug money together with his gang in the 80s in California. His girlfriend is pregnant um, and will not be in a house with drugs and guns and is headed off to Portland, Oregon. Can he quit the drugs and the gang after uh, you know, the last big deal? So uh, Quentin Tarantino, who I'm a fan of, is a fan of this film and considered George Clooney for the part, uh, of part in Reservoir Dogs after seeing his performance in it, which... Uh, Again, I did not know about this film. I had not heard of it. I didn't know he was in it. This is him right here with the, the bandana on the do-rag, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so I'm very curious to watch this because of the fact that uh, it seems like one of those kind of odd things that people are going to talk about. Okay, so this is, this is just a poster of the cover art, so we're going to leave that together, <clears throat> put it back in the slipcase, and... Uh, set it to the side for a future viewing. Um, this one just seems like one that every uh, cinephile should have on their shelf as a make sure that Clooney is not forgotten in that role. All right, next up, Red Sun Rising from 1994, the year after I graduated high school. This is directed by Francis uh, Megahe, who did Freelance. I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, stars Terry Farrell, from, uh, who was in my favorite character from DS9, uh, Deep Space Nine, Star Trek. Um, he was Dax. And uh, Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, the only Hellraiser I saw in the theater when I was in high school, no nonetheless. Um, and I remember that one because one of the Cenobites shot uh, DVDs out of his face, I believe. Uh, so this is about a tough Japanese detective that seeks vengeance after his partner is killed by a deadly Yakuza ninja, which that's pretty much goes without saying. So uh, during the final warehouse scene... Um, the, there's a fight and a lookalike of Jean-Claude Van Damme appears that is quickly dispatched by uh, Hoshino. This was done as a joke about a supposed rivalry, rivalry between the real-life uh, actors and Don Wilson's repeated challenges to Van Damme to fight him for real. So in case you didn't guess by that little thing, Don the, Don the Dragon Wilson is the lead character. I just mentioned Terry Farrell because of Terry Farrell. If you're going to pick between the two, I'd, I'm more of a fan of hers. Um, but I love a good action film, especially in the 90s. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on uh, back then. So, again, you know, got to keep this alive. Looks like this is also, yep, poster of the cover art. So just slide that back in there for a later time. I'll have to make some time here to, to watch these here soon. Uh, next up, <clears throat> excuse me, we have Evil Judgment from 1984. So going back 10 years. This is directed by uh, Claudio Castrovelli, who did Up Uranus, okay. um, and stars Pamela Collier, who was in Meatballs 3, Summer Job, and uh, Black Mirror, the movie from 1981, not the TV series. 
Uh, so this is about a girl who starts her own investigation after the police fail to catch a local serial killer. Sounds vaguely GLO-esque, if that is a way to describe it. Um, part of the reason why I picked it up was because of, of my recent decision to dig deeper into the GLE sort of thing. Sorry, I got <clears throat> sidetracked because I was looking at that cover and making sure that it was going to be okay for, for YouTube. So, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I've heard mixed things about that. Uh, next we have the Demonsville Terror, which for some reason I think uh, this is Vinegar Syndrome's fault that I've suddenly picked up several of Uli Lomel's films, but here we are. Um, he was known for Borderline Cult, which we did a dollar store driving on, which was awful. One of the worst films we've ever seen. Uh, the Boogeyman franchise, which uh, we recently watched the original Boogeyman. Had a good time with that one. That was a little bit, uh, a little, a little slow, but it was fun to watch. Um, the stars won Donald Pleasant, who you may know from The Great Escape, uh, Freak Maker, who was with Tom Baker, uh, of course, the Halloween franchise. And this one is about uh, Dr. Worley, who probes a witch's curse in Demons or in Devonsville after three women arrive, um, angering misogynistic leaders. Um, one is the reincarnated, reincarnated witch seeking vengeance on men. Uh, it follows uh, the clash with the patriarchal town and curse investigation. I, I hope made sense to you because as I was reading it, I was paying attention to what I was doing here and wasn't paying attention if those words altogether made sense. So according to Uli Lamel, he got along very well with Donald Pleasant, saying he was an angel to work with, um, which I, that's, I guess, what you want on a set in a movie. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yes. Two undercover angels. It's too late. I already showed it. Um, <laughs> this uh, also features uh, Kiss Me Monster, which the poster for Kiss Me Monster is fantastic. It's one that I would love to have on the wall because it's just so kind of, this isn't it. They don't actually have the original poster in here, but look it up. It's, it's really a great poster. Um, so this was uh, directed, both of them, by uh, Jess, uh, Jesus Franco, or Jess, I think it's Jess Franco, maybe, however that goes by. Uh, or maybe it is Jesus Franco. But anyway, 270, I'm sorry, 207 directorial credits is a lot. This, uh, both film stars uh, Janine Renaud, who was in Operation White Shark, Kiss Me Monster, which is also in here. Um, and stop for a second and show you what we got before we continue with the, the plots and things. Yeah, I really wish they had that original poster because it's, <clears throat> I'll have to put it up on the screen here so you guys can see it because it is just a, it's just a weird little kind of exploitation-y looking cover. So, uh, Two Undercover Angels is about, uh, it says, Red Lips are two female detectives trying to find missing models and dancers. A pop artist called Klaus Thriller and his werewolf-like assistant, Morpho, are the main suspects in the murders. Uh, um, and in Kiss Me Monster, uh, finds the Red Lips moonlighting on a striptease world tour, but no sooner do they hit the stage and the girls are up to their pasties and stiffs, Satanists and uh, sapphic sadists, all after a secret formula for human clones. I mean, it just sounds insane. So it's uh, the original and the sequel. Um, so the first film was the final acting role of Alexander Engel. That's the only trivia I could find out about either of those films. So I thought I should probably put that in there. Alec let Alexander have a little sunlight. And finally, Guilty Pleasure from 1997. Uh, this was directed by Joe Zazzo, who did Screen Book 1 and 2, and I actually have a uh, Terravision collection that uh, I've talked about here on an unbox, another unboxing video, uh, that is Joe Zazzo's original, like, VHS um, movies that he made back in the 80s, and so I haven't actually gotten a chance to get too far into that, but uh, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by his work, so I couldn't not um, pick this up and make sure there's nothing bad there. Um, so this was also co-directed by Joseph F. Parada, who did Five Dead on the Crimson Canvas. Sounds like a Giallo-type situation. Uh, the stars won Sasha Graham, who was in Psycho Sisters, the 1998 remake. And uh, her name was Christina, which is the film uh, that James L. Edwards did. And sounds kind of necromantic-ish in a way, but without the hardcore, like, not heavy on the gore kind of situation that was happening. 
Um, um, I like James L. Edwards and his work. I uh, worked a lot with J.R. Bookwalter. Um, and the remake of Psycho Sisters, I have the original. The original, I guess it would be two versions uh, from the Wave production company that are on the shelf. But uh, I don't have the 98 one. I know that they recently re released it with the other two versions included. But um, I don't know. Maybe we'll pick it up at some point if it's cheap enough. But uh, for this film, two beautiful women who live in the same apartment building each have a shocking story to tell. On the first floor lives Sylvia uh, Racino, who has three psychotic admirers, while on the second floor, Rosemary Curtis is descending into madness after joining an insane acting school. All right. So one of the waiters got hit on the head for real during the fight scene in the restaurant. And I guess that uh, probably is not a good thing. So that's it. That's the first half of the box. There will be another half coming. I don't know in which order. This may be the first video released or it could be the second one. It's a roulette of fun. So uh, thank you all for joining me for this unboxing video. And uh, don't forget that tomorrow is not guaranteed. So don't forget to unbox your heart. See you next time.